Good morning! Today I'm going to talk to you about creating a great call to action for your home page. And I apologize in advance if I have to hop off midway through. Our plumbing pipes uh, froze over the holiday season, so it damaged all the drywall downstairs and the guy's coming by to fix it today. So, apologies in advance. Uh, but a call to action, if you're unfamiliar with it, is basically the thing that drives your user to where you want them to go, I guess. Uh, so a great example is if you're reading a sales page and it says buy now, that's called action. Or if you're on a website and you see a video and it says sign up, that's the call to action. It's basically the thing that drives the user to do what you want them to do. And a website without a call to action is not a website that's performing at its best, to say the least. So my goal today is to kind of walk you through what goes into creating a good call to action fundamentally and then implementing it. Uh, so I'm going to pull up a couple of sites. A uh, dude named Sean got in touch with me asking for some feedback on his site. So I'm going to pull it up. Hopefully he doesn't mind. And uh, looking at it, it's a very nice looking site. I really love the background image and the header and stuff. Uh, but the thing that I notice is that this image right here is the same as this right here. And I have a very large screen, but if I didn't, which most people don't, most of what I'd see above the fold would be probably the, like maybe right here where my mouse is, basically the bottom of this text. And so if I'm visiting this site for the first time, I have no clue where to go. Uh, whereas if you pull up my website, for example, although autoplay video can be annoying, it still starts, you know, and, and it immediately starts driving you towards where I want to go. I mean, if you look at my website, I'm betting you can guess what my goal is for visitors to my site, which is, of course, to get them to sign up for the e-course, just like you did. Or, or sorry, not e-course, but the online course. Um, and because I decided that, that, that that's what I wanted my visitors to do, I then structured all my content around that. So looking at this Time for Science place, we see that it's a nature and science learning center, which uh, Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, but judging by pictures and stuff, it's kind of like a hands-on museum almost, that's my guess. And so I'm assuming that the people looking at this are either parents or educators looking for like a field trip. And regardless of which of those two audiences it is, the things that they're gonna wanna see would be one, what sorts of activities can be done there. And then two, what needs to be done to get, like to book a spot or, or to get tickets or however it works. So I would think that you would just drive the user straight through that. The, the thing that I would think is the most important thing to have on this homepage would be something that's basically like a big button or a video or, or whatever, a link to a page that's kind of getting at learn more about the different activities that we offer. And uh, as you can imagine, if you're browsing the site, you got to click there, you looked at all these fun activities, and then at the bottom of that page it says click here to buy tickets. That's just a perfect flow, and it's, it's exciting to think about compared to saying, all right, which of these links do I want to go to? So what I'm going to do now, now that you've kind of seen an example of a site without a call to action and a site with one, is I'm going to walk you through how I create mine because there's a, a process that I go through. Uh, the first thing is that you need to ask yourself, at the end of the day, what do you want your visitors to do? If it's a website for a small business, chances are you want your visitors to either fill out a contact form or give you a call. You want them to get in touch. Uh, if it's like a restaurant, you probably want them to look at your menu because most people don't really, I guess, book a restaurant at least I live in a small town, but uh, for typical towns, like you go to the restaurant website, if it looks good, you go to the restaurant. You don't call them and say, hey, I want to come into your restaurant. Uh, and so it's a little bit harder to, to track that sort of thing than it would be if they filled out a, a request to quote form because then you would actually know one person did this. Uh, but either way, ask yourself what at the end of the day you're hoping your visitor will do. And in all likelihood, it's that you want them to buy something from you. So. Get a piece of paper, write down that end of the day thing, so buy something. And then write down what goes into buying something. So for a restaurant, buying something means that they're coming into the restaurant. For someone who's like a 
drywall repairman. Buying something means that they're probably going to fill out. Sorry for my eye being all itchy. Uh, they're probably going to fill out the request to uh, request to quote form on the site and then buy something. Um, for a web designer, they're probably going to schedule a talk with you. So find out what goes before the purchase, and then find out what goes before that. So basically, we're taking the end result and we're working our way up. Uh, so for a restaurant, before I go into the restaurant, I look for price, I look for pictures of the food, and I look for reviews. So those are kind of the three things I would look for. So ask yourself what things people look for in your business. Um, for my web design business, I recognize that people look for portfolio items, they look sometimes for live sites, they look for testimonials, and um, and that's about it. Because a lot of with, with web design, since it's a service, it's often hard to put a per website pricing since it always varies, as you know. Uh, and with this museum, I'm assuming that pricing is on a per ticket basis, or if you were to rent the center out for a private event, it would cost a, a fixed fee. So anyway, I hope that this helps. Basically, you need to walk through what it means to you to get a sale and how a user can be gently guided through that in a way that feels natural and not salesy. Um, so once you kind of have your idea of, of those steps, once you have it all mapped out on paper, then it's as simple as taking that first step. So let's say with the restaurant, the first step is to look at the menu. What I would do is use this homepage space that we have here to speak to that. Because you only have, I think it's like seven seconds to capture the user's attention. And you see on my artist here tutorial site, the video will always be above the fold. It's the first thing you'll see. And I try to get talking about it pretty quick after ranting about my cat for a few minutes. Um, and so if you're going to do a video, that should be the first thing on your home page. If you're going to do an informational graphic, it should be the first thing on your home page. Uh, it's always good to have a very compelling headline uh, that speaks to the user's needs. So I'm not going to swamp you with all this content, but the key takeaway here is ask yourself what you want the user to do and what the user wants. Make them mesh and guide the user through it. Hope you have a great day, and uh, comment below if you thought this was helpful.